لا نحكي قبل ما اخبركم انا اعمل لكم اعمل لكم كور ماجسترال خبروني شو بتعملوا عرف عرفتوا شو شو تيت تبع البرزنتيشن اللي بدي اعملها اوكي هاو تو بيلد ا تكنولوجي بزنس اوت اوف لبنان اي بين دوينغ ذات فور 24 ييرز سو خبروني عنكم اها اوكي انا بعلم بالقلبة الماتريز الاوديو فيزيوال سنة ايه سنة لا بعطي كور كرياسيون دونتربريز سنة ايه سنة لا ما دايما ماني كونسيستون ربيع نصار قلبة كمان اه والشباب تريمينا وين؟ بعلي شو اسم المدرسة؟ في بعلي شو اسمها شو اسمها المدرسة الكبيرة القديمة بعلي؟ ايه؟ لا مارون عبود اوكي عم عم جرب اتذكر الجامعة الوطنية او شيء ما ايه؟ ايه؟ لا عمرها اه كو اوكي هاي I'm just uh, getting to uh, to meet everyone since we're a small group. Come in terminal. I'm just I'll just take the background. Marketing. Market research. What type of? Okay, consumer products. Which is not too strange. Even though they are not just. Do you mean? اه ده اعترض ما انا كنت فيهم كلهم فبروبلي شو شو بدي اعمل ديفلوبر؟ ايه كو طيب هلا انا ما حضرت شيء قلت حسب ال بنشتغل حسب الجمهور ف اه يا زلمه منقوف هاي يا سو جيفن ذا اودينس I will talk about how to build a company, entrepreneurship in general. I have some notes I'm going to read. I didn't prepare a presentation. Um, so the first thing, why do, you want to build, why do you want to build a business? Why I built a business? It always starts with some kind of passion. Anybody has, is an entrepreneur here, already built a business? No one. Okay, cool. So you're passionate about something. I'll talk about my passion. So that was sometimes in 1991. I started my business in 1992. Uh, I was still a student at uh, uh, the engineering school of the Jesuit University. But my passion was about industry. I was studying telecommunications and I wanted to do something that will lead to creating industry, uh, technology industry, out of Lebanon. Creating uh, Communication equipment, industrial control, something. I didn't know. I had no experience, obviously. I was very naive. And there were also another group of people. We were three. They were as naive. And each one of us had his, his story, something that moved him. Uh, one wanted to make money. And he figured by joining me and my partner, he can make money. He was a good salesman. And now he has... He started, after our first venture, he started a very large systems integrator, so he, he succeeded. And uh, my other partner, who is still my partner for today, uh, wanted to create software, oh, vague ideas. Okay, so we joined forces and we said, okay, let's start. My idea, my pa my, how I managed to, uh, to turn my idea into something practical with all the naivete that was back then. Uh, I thought the war just ended. We're talking 1992. That war had just ended, and uh, <laughs> so, so, so that war has just ended. And Zabtar uh, Fuhel you know where the location of the. So Belmkellis, we're surrounded by industry, industry. Back then, it was better than now. By the way, you had more stuff. So I figured all these factories. They have the machines, they have the skills, they're creating something. They're missing the moderni modernization. And modernization today is automation. 
So instead of people taking decisions, I want to connect the machines with sensors and software and computers and make production more streamlined, faster, better. And I did not know what I was talking about. So just everything that I say, put yourself, I was 20 years old, oh, maybe your age, or you're a little, little bit younger, but same. So I did not know how, what I'm talking about, but I had skill, I had some skills. I, I was already creating circuit boards and doing industrial control, and like a little bit, a little bit uh, ahead from the rest of the students that were with me, so because I did a lot of personal research. And so we started, the first customer that we got, we announced, like, okay, we announced it to, uh, to our classmates when we graduated. We're starting a company. In our yearbook, we put an ad, 100 bucks. <laughs> uh, I managed to raise from my parents $2,500, so did my partners. Then we were joined by a fourth partner who owned an office. So we had an office and seven thousand dollars to start with. 1992, it was wasn't bad. Office location very good. Jnain Shufi, Zaptar Fouin, Manta Halwe, had a nice view. And uh, the father of our fourth partner had a uh, 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 furniture furniture factory. So he made our office look amazing. So whoever came to our office was impressed, like, wow, okay, these guys are serious. They have wood panels and nice desks. Okay, we started telling people, we are doing industrial control, we're creating circuit boards, and I already could show some stuff that I was, I wish I brought a picture. I still have some of those. Uh, anyway, so the first customer we got was Randur. So I had never seen a factory, really. <laughs> so one guy told some other guy who told some other guy who came to us said we heard that you guys are amazing uh, I have a project for you at Randur so he took us to Randur Randur is like uh, it's like uh, you have to drive inside it it's uh, maybe 10 times the length of uh, Forum du Beirut it's huge so we went by car and we walked and we walked and we walked and we got to the control room and we, we walked past all the chocolate uh, uh, machines, I don't know what you call them, the, the, the manufacturing belts, the smell of butter, the smell of milk, the smell of uh, chocolate everywhere. And we got to the control room. It was like from here to there with 1970s or 1960s technology, wires and relays and big bulbs and it was amazing. Anyway, we looked at it, we discussed what they needed to achieve, what was the, the function that they needed to connect to computers, and we went a few times, we discussed, we gave them an offer, they said no. <laughs> it did not work. <laughs> so, anyway, that was the first that was the first month. So we started the company in September 92. That was probably October or November. So uh, 24 years ago, exactly 24 years ago. That did not work. Anyway, eventually we did do stuff. But that, I'm just saying, like, I'm just telling a story. <laughs> so the second, the second uh, type of customers we got were, uh, were uh, PABXs. You know what that means? Like, uh, uh, Telephone uh, exchange, telephone exchange. So you had the small exchanges in hospitals and in hotels and companies. You have 20 extensions, 30 extensions, whatever, small. Eh, it's not right. Small exchanges. Uh, so in 1992, these were not connected to anything. And uh, how people ac accounted for talk time. So typically, you had a hospital and the patient would call the operator say, please connect me to the, this number. They would dial it and they would use a chronometer and they would write on a book like, room 304 talked for five minutes. And then they would. They needed to automate that, which was a great, uh, great project to have. So we started doing that stuff. And that actually worked. We did, uh, so long story short, we did a kind of a circuit board that sits inside a computer that connects to the PABXs and a software that gives you a bill per extension. 
we did that for three, four years. We had hospitals, hotels. We sold a lot of that stuff back then. Uh, the last project that I did, before I tell you how then we pivoted, was extremely interesting. So again, it was amazing how it worked, how people, you know, we could not advertise. We didn't know about marketing. We couldn't hire salespeople and we didn't know what we were doing. So 90, now we're in 93, some 93 or early 94. Again, somebody knocks at our door. Hi, I am X. So this guy was a uh, topographer. And the way they did topography, when you want to do topography for small parcels of land, you see the people with the, with the whatever, the instruments, etc. But if you want to do it over big surfaces, uh, one method to do it was to fly a plane on top of that area, take pictures, and then you use two pictures, you put them in a big machine, it's called, I forgot what it's called, anyway, you put them in a big machine that has a sort of binocular, and then you can create a 3D model of that terrain. And that machine they had bought in 1972, so you can imagine, it's already 20 years into that, and probably they did not buy the latest technology back then, so it's a 1992 machine where you literally you sit inside it, you're looking with the binoculars at, the, at those two pictures, and you had X, Y, Z. <laughs> okay. and, and push. So when you push on this one, there's a sort of a plotter next to that machine. The pen would go down and would trace whatever you're following. And then when you remove your foot, the pen would go up. That's it. And then at the end, you would get on that huge plotter, like really mechanical, heavy stuff. Uh, looks amazing, by the way. I wish I had a picture of it. Now I'm, re I'm going to go back and get pictures of everything that I've done. I haven't prepared this. So uh, anyway, so they had that. And their question was, can we get that stuff into the computer, into AutoCAD? Because that would, because at the time you had already AutoCAD. Because that's amazing, they could do, they could give that to architects, to, uh, you know, to structural engineers, etc., to, uh, to, to use it. Instead of, because the alternative would have been, you take the piece of paper and you take it, uh, you give it to someone who has a dig digitizer. I don't know if you've seen that. That was like a big flat surface. You put the, the plan, the drawing on it, and you had a sort of an instrument like that with a crosshairs, and you'd go over each corner and you click and then it copies whatever you have into AutoCAD. So their question was how can it'll save them a lot of time uh, to just take that into AutoCAD. So I said okay we'll look at it and uh, thankfully they had all the technical manuals that came with that machine because back then engineering was done like engineering. Today you receive this it breaks you throw it away. That machine when they sold it they gave you like, I don't know, six, seven binders of all the details, the circuits, etc., how it worked. So they had that, it was 1970, 60 something electronics that I have never seen, but I was able to, you know, to figure it out. And we built an interface for them, this big, all discrete components, electronics, that, uh, that uh, fit inside a IBM PC. And then we wrote a software on top of that. And then we wrote an interface to AutoCAD and this allowed them to do that same stuff, but they would get the, the drawing inside AutoCAD. And that kind of saved their, I mean, revived their career till 1999, where some Canadian company, or 1998, something like that, so it gave them five or six years, until some Canadian company created a software that ran on a Sun workstation that took these two pictures and did it automatically. So. That killed that. But, so anyway, so I, I did that for uh, three years. At the end, we figured there isn't enough money, there isn't enough scale, and we actually suck at it. Not in the design of the stuff, and we, because we got more experience, we're doing very interesting stuff. Just to manufacture. Today, China is much easier than before. You manufacture anything. We have a lot of hardware companies in Lebanon. They do the design, they send it to China, they go, they talk. You have so many ways, to, even 
even startups in the US, etc. So you have so many ways to manufacture electronics in quantity and uh, get quality. At the time, the printed circuit boards, there was one guy in Junier, I used to go take a floppy drive with my design and he would print it on a plotter and then we would get the circuit boards, they wouldn't work every time. We had to test, it's, it was impossible to make money with that. So we stopped doing that and we pivoted into software. Now, how, how's my story so far? <laughs> Hello. So, how I walked away from that was like, okay, I want to create technology out of Lebanon. Now, I'm not as naive as I used to be when I was 20 years old. I was 26 or 27. Uh, it doesn't work. We don't have skills, unfortunately. Now it's getting better, but at the time, we don't have skills in the sense that you have amazing Lebanese all around the world, but they're all around the world, they're not here. I could not hire engineers with the right skill level, etc. We had that. The other problem, uh, we don't have a market, so where am I going to sell industrial stuff? I don't know. Like, in, in the Gulf, how to sell that, who to talk to, etc. It was very complex. So I deprogrammed myself from that initial passion to create industry. But, yes, so I focused on technology. Like, what can I do in software technology, which is easier to do, easier to market, etc. Now, I did a bunch of stuff. I'm going to... I'm gonna save save you a lot of uh, stories, <laughs> uh, and I traveled. I so we already once we moved into software, we were selling in Eastern Europe, in Africa. That's where we started, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then I moved from that first startup. I did another startup, and I did another startup. I moved to Silicon Valley. Then I moved to, and I was doing business also in Latin America and in Europe. You know, my life changed. Then I came back to Lebanon, 2003. Uh, so, I had started something small in Europe. Okay, one story worth mentioning. At some point in 2000, I co-founded with, with another Lebanese guy and some Brazilian people, uh, an ISP in Brazil. ISP, like internet connectivity. Back then it was still dial-up. And our business model was, we'll give the free dial-up, so you get free internet, but you consume our advertising. Everybody was doing it, we figured let's do it in Brazil. But it wasn't just that, we also had an ASP, what people call today SaaS. So we, we were a content play, we wanted to go after all the content makers, people that have magazines, etc., and get them to have websites were still, so people were still very print. And they didn't know how to do, uh, how to do uh, websites efficiently. So our story was we get the consumers, we give them advertising, but also we have to give them content. So we go to the market from this side, all the content creators, and we give them the tools for free. Say, look, it's a SaaS. It's a, SaaS, it's a content management system, SaaS, with the website and the advertising. You see it a lot, you know, it has, this, this concept has morphed a lot, but our concept was we give them all that, they create their own content under their own brand, and they sell it, and good for them, but we get to keep their content and use it whenever we want also in our portal. So we became a destination portal. We had, in seven, eight months, 2.5 million subscribers on the ISP. We were the second largest in Latin America. Then, some of you are too young for that. In 2000, uh, something happened. It's called the bubble burst. The internet bubble burst, all that. Which took, in its wake, thousands of startups, etc. We suffered because we were going after our next round of funding. So we had spent so far 30 million, 27 million dollars. We needed another 20 something. And that wasn't there. We succeeded, but we had to close shop. Anyway, long story short after that, I ended up in Europe. I started something in, uh, in Milan, in Italy. And I started getting customers, a software company that is called Element N, which is my current software company. And I was starting to get customers also in Saudi Arabia and the Gulf. Then I decided to come back to Lebanon and to start a technology company again in Beirut. Uh, I think, I, I think uh, that 15 minutes are over. <laughs> Element N. Uh, N. It's still. Uh, it's still. 
uh, enterprise software. Hey. Specifically in the Internet of Things. Hey. Scripter is a brand of Element N. Ah, and to. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so I'm not going to talk about Element N. We're a B2B technology company. We create software that enterprises use, not consumer software, and we sell around the around the world, North America, Europe, and uh, the Middle East. Uh, have questions, anybody? Anybody has any question about? That's it. We're good. Huh?